Hey, it's Mike over at FisherAssOff.com, and uh, today what we're talking about in our fishing class is how to catch a largemouth bass. Now, well, actually spotted bass or whatever bass is swimming around the lakes and ponds in Florida, that kind of bass. Uh, yeah, like most people that, that grew up in the woods like I did, you learn how to catch bass at a pretty early age because uh, that's all you have. You got ponds, you got canals, you got whatever it is. You throw a line in there and bass are just about everywhere. It's always a mystery to me how they get there too. Might be a pond in the middle of a thousand acre, you know, cattle ranch that hasn't been stocked and sure enough, a couple years later, there's bass there. Yeah, maybe they, the eggs get caught on heron's feet. I don't know what it is. I, I wish someone would tell me the answer to that actually. But uh, all right, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about how to do this. All right, how to catch a largemouth bass. Well, first of all, if you've seen any of these, um, you gotta figure out what they like. So a bass is lazy, it's not moving around very much. It's just basically sitting around waiting for ambush opportunities. So what does that mean? If there's any current in the uh, lake or pond, you know, some sort of wind current, uh, you know, it's gonna be facing it. It's probably going to be hiding behind something, waiting for some unsuspecting uh, prey atom to come by. So structure of any kind. You know, they might be uh, next to a rock, a fallen tree, um, anything. You know, they're, they're in the grass, you know, they're, they're in all the weeds, they're in all of the vegetation uh, that's in the water, the lily pads. They're, they're basically just waiting for some prey item to make a mistake so they can eat them. So if it's got ambush opportunities, there's structure around, and there's abundant prey, it's a pretty safe bet that there's going to be some bass around too. Now, the spawning period for, for the uh, largemouth bass here in Florida depends on water temperature. So depending on the part of Florida, uh, it's going to be a big difference. So I basically figure it's December through May, because uh, here's the deal. They're not going to start spawning until the water gets to be 60 degrees and stays that way for at least a week. So it's got to get to 60, not just for a day or two, stay that way for about a week, and then they'll start spawning. And they, they don't quit, really, until the water temperature gets uh, you know up, up to 80 degrees plus. So the best time, the best bite in um, Florida is going to be somewhere February, March, April time frame is when you're going to probably get the uh, most aggressive bites uh, if you're fishing for, uh, for bass. All right, let's go ahead and look at the best lures. Um, yeah, a lot of people disagree with this, but uh, these are the ones that I've caught the most bass in my life with. I've been catching them since I was probably uh, four or five years old. So uh, these are the ones. Number one, soft plastic. The old purple worm has always worked best for me. I've used purple salamanders. I've used pur purple just about everything. But basically a dark colored soft plastic uh, seems to work best uh, for at least the lakes and ponds that I've been fishing down here in south and central Florida. Uh, my next favorite one, and I catch the most, I really like this, these two a lot. It's any sort of buzz bait or spinner bait uh, because you can cover so much water so quickly with them. Um, and a crank bait for the same reason, except the crank bait, you know, lip crank bait, uh, so it gets down in the water column. So basically, fishing a soft plastic weedless on the bottom very slowly. Fishing a buzz bait spinner bait, you know, on the top part of the water column, you know, quickly, uh, reel the nose in. And then, of course, a crank bait, which to me kind of covers the middle part of the, of the water column. Uh, but you got to keep in mind, I bet 99% I bet of the bass that I've caught, I caught in 10 feet or less of water. So, uh, you know, I've never really caught them in a deep water. I know in the middle of some deep pond you can catch bass. I've just never done it. So this is just what I know how to catch them. And as far as the best live baits go, I, you can't beat a live shiner. That's about it. You throw a shiner underneath the cork, uh, probably going to catch a bass if they're there. They can't resist shiners. 
any of the panfish, doesn't matter. It could be a shell cracker, bluegill, whatever. Um, you know, just get it the right size depending on the fish you want to catch. You, know, you get a big palm sized uh, shell cracker, uh, that's a big old bass you're probably going to catch. Uh, and number three, you know, crawdads work great. You can put a crawdad underneath a bobber, um, you know, just kind of hook it. Like if you've ever fished saltwater with crabs, with blue crabs or anything, same deal. You hook them, make sure you don't kill them. Uh, they're, they're snapping around on the bottom, you know, on the hook, dangling from the hook. A big bass loves crawdads. So that's another one, uh, another bait you can use, live bait. Um, but that's about it. You know, I just wanted to talk about that because bass are probably the most sought after fish in Florida, probably North America, in fact. So I definitely wanted to do a how-to class on how to catch a bass. Uh, but you can see more of this information right on our website. Our website is www.fishyourassoff.com. There's a how-to section, a where-to section, a what-to section, fishing videos, tips and techniques. Um, it, it's, it's very informative. I'm very biased, you know, I'm the guy that built it. But still, go there, check it out. I think you're going to like it. But um, I think that's it for today. So until next time, we'll see you then. All right. Bye-bye.